Good morning, Facebook. I hope everyone is having an awesome, awesome start to the day. And obviously being Friday uh, with the weekend just around the corner, Corner, no doubt everyone's feeling a little bit more excited. So uh, I hope that you've had a great week and today I really wanted to, uh, hey Ken, great to have you on here, uh, really wanted to chat today about how to find deep peace in a world full of chaos and I think that this is uh, quite relevant uh, for many people because we can all get caught up in the busyness and in the rush and in the stress of life. Hey Kayla, great to have you on here hon. And uh, this can be uh, really challenging then to be able to uh, come back to yourself and find a feeling of deep inner peace within yourself simply because of the rush and the busyness of life that uh, just seems to unfold every day. And it's almost like we're on this crazy roller coaster ride uh, that we just can't get off. And so I'm really wanting to uh, speak further about how to implement more love in our life simply to be able to get back to those basics of feeling a deeper sense of inner peace and contentment within yourself, have your days flow easier than ever before, and really uh, just get back in touch with the, the, the inner you without feeling like, you know, we've got to put 50,000 masks on uh, or 50,000 layers on and, uh, and see, you know, what is it that you actually are really wanting. Hey Donna, great to have you on here, hon. And uh, so it's really important to be able to take time out for ourselves and to start to quieten down uh, that inner world so that we can really tap back into uh, our inner self as well. So how do we actually do that when our life is literally jam-packed with so many different things and uh, we're literally rushing from one thing to the next? And I've definitely had, uh, you know, a, a really crazy couple of 48 hours uh, and I'm really excited to be heading off to Melbourne for a meditation retreat uh, this weekend as well uh, and also uh, tapping into some higher consciousness stuff, which will be lots and lots of fun and it'll be interesting to see what comes through there. So that is exciting me and knowing that I'll be having a full day of meditation on Sunday, I absolutely know my body is going to be so rested and so calm. But it wasn't always like that for me. Uh, definitely, um, you know, go back eight years or so, uh, I was uh, a new single mum. I was truly struggling uh, financially, struggling uh, raising my two girls. They were age six and eight at the time. I'd chosen to restudy, so I was uh, traveling down to Melbourne and back once a month. I was leaving at 2 a.m. on a Saturday morning and getting back home at 11 p.m. on night, like at night on Sunday uh, after training all weekend and then hitting a full-time job, trying to get my practical in, as well as obviously doing all the things that uh, we need to do in a household. And so um, I definitely relate to that chaos. I still can get into that sense of chaos at times where it's just like you're constantly in that fight flight response. You feel reactive with the world around you. You feel like there's nothing left inside uh, and you're falling into bed just completely exhausted and, um, and feeling obliterated. So you're definitely resonating with that. <laughs> um, by the sound so thank you for the love <laughs> and you know I, I like more than happy I love having chats with people too so if anybody's got any particular questions or um, things that they're wanting to find out more about please this is yeah really interactive as well so I'd love to um, to find out what uh, what's going on in your world that's perhaps you know a little chaotic or a little bit challenging as well so uh, so you know that was where I, I was at and I thought God you know something's got to change and uh, it wasn't until I started um, bringing through more and more self-love where I actually chose to say no and chose to not make things as hard as what they actually needed to be. I think a lot of society's deeply ingrained beliefs are, you know, you need to work hard to deserve things. Um, and, you know, I'm not taking away from uh, anybody that's working hard or doing those things, but sometimes we make it so hard for ourselves. And I seem to be in this cycle, um, particularly back in that day, where I was trying 
so hard to, to get all the bits and pieces to fit together and to work to make my life work so finally I could feel a particular way. Hey Alison, great to have you on here hon. So finally I could feel a particular way so finally I could be happy but what was actually happening I was so exhausted that uh, extra money that I was making was all going into helping myself feel better as well as into medical and health stuff and so it was almost like I was cutting my nose off despite my face and I just felt like I wasn't getting ahead and what I've since realized and heading across to Naranja on uh, Wednesday night where I delivered um, my Angels Wings Teenage Girls program for the first time ever I actually felt a hundred percent completely calm before running a workshop I had over a hundred people in the audience so it was amazing and yet there was not one bit of nervousness inside of me and it was so fascinating because uh, previously when I've ran workshops uh, I can have high levels of anxiety just beforehand which is quite normal you know public speaking can be one of those things and it's like oh I hope everything's in place but I really did feel so calm and I was thinking about it afterwards and this is what I really wanted to share today was it really came through from letting go of the need to control the outcome and tapping back into a deeper sense of self. Uh, I, uh, I do pray as well, um, more so just as a setting an intention. Uh, so sending it out to the universe or God or whatever you want to call it, but that larger part of ourself, that greater version of ourself and knowing that, you know, I was totally taken care of, that there was nothing uh, that could go wrong in that moment, even though the mind wants to jump in and tell a story uh, about that. But there really was just a, such a deep sense of peace and fulfillment inside of me. And the more time that we actually take out for ourselves and get to know the real inner us and tap into that heart energy or that soul or that spirit energy, whatever you're wanting to call it, it really does help the chaotic world to drop away. And it doesn't mean that we still haven't got responsibilities. It doesn't mean that we still aren't productive with work. It doesn't mean that you know we still don't take care of our body and our families and cook meals and do all of those things, but it's without the stress. So we actually can function and move throughout our day in a much more productive flowing way as opposed to being in a constant state of angst and tenseness within our body where we're holding on so tightly trying to control everything in our external world because we're so scared inside we feel out of control internally and it never works we're trying to control that external world or trying to get everything done so finally you can feel relaxed or finally you can feel at peace or finally you can feel okay it just won't ever work because we are um, sending out receptors all of the time to what we're actually inviting into our world and we're so deeply trained within our patterns, within our uh, neurological pathways, within our mind of where to go emotionally. We're very habitual creatures where we will just get back into that autopilot unless we're consciously making new choices to take time out, to become more mindful and um, you know to, to get back into well, how do I want to be living each day? And it's about really becoming consciously aware when we're drifting off, when we're just getting caught up in the mess and losing everything that's, uh, or not losing everything, but losing that emotional control where we're just reactive and responsive, or reactive a lot of the time as well. So uh, where we're, um, hey, Jerry, great to have you on here. So, um, when we're in that constant state of reactivity, it's like the mind is just stuck in survival mode and uh, we really do feel challenged at that time to be able to come back and center. So how do we move beyond that? I feel like I've kind of gone over that subject a few times. How do we move beyond that? It really is about choosing and getting clear, number one, on what you want. So writing down, having a journal, um, or whatever process that might be for you, I find that having a journal and setting your intentions as opposed to what you actually really want your life to be about. And this can be quite challenging at the start because you may have tried things in the past. You might have um, felt like you were trying to implement a new exercise regime and it just, you know, the wheels fell off. And this is what I found. The wheels kept falling off, but 
it got shorter and shorter and shorter. So once upon a time, the wheels would fall off and I would be out of whack for like three or four months. And then the wheels would fall off and I would be out of whack for like a week. And then the wheels would fall off and I'd be out of whack for a day. And now it's down to minutes and hours. So if I'm off track, because I'm so much more tuned in, because I've listened to myself and I've noticed and journaled. So it's a journey, it's not a quick fix. This is not something that you can click your fingers and say, okay, well, I'm just going to feel this way instead. Um, it can be a choice, but generally to be able to anchor that in more and more and more, it, uh, it really does come back to um, getting clear on what it is that you want each day and making more resourceful habits uh, and staying consistent with those habits more and more as well. So when you know when you're going off track, um, you re literally can just, um, uh, you, you know, you'll know your red flags, you'll know the emotions, you'll know if you're tired, you'll know if you're reactive or you're impatient with your kids there's some big signs that you're actually going off track and then what are the key things that bring you back on track so being able to identify those five things of what actually brings you back on track as well is super super important so uh, that might be you know you do have a solid routine uh, for exercise and taking care of your body you might be uh, drinking more water to help with your energy uh, or you might uh, be making sure that you fuel your body in the right way you might have a couple of friends that you have a really good laugh and a giggle with uh, or it could be that you're just having, um, you know, you've got something that you know uplifts you, whether that's walking in nature um, or doing something outside of the chaos, though. It literally is about recreating your world into a world that feels so much better. If we feel chaotic inside, that is literally what we're going to be attracting externally as well. So it can make things very difficult uh, to, um, to find that inner peace if we've got a whole bunch of emotions going on, if there's a lot of situations that we're actually not dealing with uh, and not taking the time to actually work on. So it really does come back to taking time out for yourself, becoming more mindful. Hey, Sania, uh, great to have you on here. And uh, becoming more mindful and really taking that time to get clear on what you want and then what is the first action step with that. So it could be just like I said before, you know, one of those five things that's going to help to start to get you back on track. It's never, you know, doing the whole, whole overhaul that may work for you. Um, and if it does, that's great. What I found though, uh, long-term consistent change happens when we're just working on just the small changes, just the tiny baby steps. We're not putting too much pressure on ourselves um, to create a, like a lot of change at the same time because when that happens, it's very difficult to sustain it and maintain it. Then we get into a failure cycle where we beat ourselves up because we're not following through. And, uh, and then, you know, that just becomes unresourceful after a while. So what is one to two things that you could do each day that you know would bring you back to yourself that would be an indication of self-love, self-care, self-nurturing? And if you're sitting there saying, you know, I don't have the time, I am too busy, I'm, I'm just, you don't get it, my world is rushed, uh, all of those things, then I would really challenge you to ask yourself why you are choosing to hold on to those limiting beliefs and to be able to get clear on how you actually do want to be living instead and start to journal about that, start to create that vision. And if you were already living that, how would your internal state be? What would your thoughts be? What would your beliefs be? And what would you know to be true? And what would your aligned actions now be each day? Perhaps, you know, you'd be saying no to a couple of things. Perhaps you would value your time more and, uh, and perhaps um, take that time more for yourself as well. So hope that's been helpful in finding peace in a, a chaotic world. You will never find it by trying to control the external world or try and uh, change it all out there. It is all changes come from the internal first. So we first need to find the internal state around feeling that sense of peacefulness, but that won't happen unless you choose to actually start to take the time out as well. So uh, enjoy your day and uh, have a fabulous, fabulous weekend. And uh, I look forward to speaking with you guys soon. Bye for now.